Hello, ma'am. So let's Hello, reflect sir. once again about the phases and the remaining portion. Thank you. Ah, yes, sir. So in the, I mean, this is a scale development measurement and validation process, which starts with the scale development first. So in this uh, step, what in this stage, what we have done is it comprises of five, six steps, which we have followed. The first uh, is the item. We have generated the items from the literature, which was available on theory of constraints. Thereafter, we confirmed those items with the help of marketing academicians, followed by the TOC experts. Then we, because we had to contact the branch managers, we were, uh, we actually aimed to generate the data from the branch managers if we contacted the five branch managers also thereafter pre-testing was done twice one with the 10 branch managers and academicians and thereafter the second the second pre-test we contacted the 50 branch managers this is how the content validity was assessed in the second stage uh, which comprised of sample domain and frame so now because uh, we had to select a branch uh, a particular bank so because there is a very successful profit making bank in uh, Jammu and Kashmir state so that time it was a state only 2015 so that was a Jammu and Kashmir bank limited so we contacted the 208 branch and assistant branch managers of different uh, branches of JNK bank and 173 completely uh, filled in questionnaires they were returned back to us in the third stage scale refinement so it has these seven eight steps first is the construct some criterion one so we initially had for pool of 46 items so in this first step nine items got deleted so we were left with 37 items for the second step in the second step no item was delete, deleted deleted then we went to the third step which is the item to total correlation three items were deleted because three items they had the item to total correlation below 0 0.50 so three items those three items they were deleted in the fourth step, then we looked into the mean and the variance that any item which has a mean below 4.0, variance below 0 0.90, so that item was subject to deletion, but no such item appeared. Thereafter, the inter-item correlation was observed and all the correlations, they were above 0 0.50. And then finally, we were left with 34 items and with the Cronbeck Alpha above 0 0.80. Thereafter, then we performed the EFA, which is exploratory factor analysis on 34 items under three dimensions. That is the mindset, measurement, and methodology. But all the items, they were left free. So corrected item to total correlation were above 0 0.40. Items left were 34. In this case, Cronbeck Alpha was above 0 0.70. And we performed the convergent and discriminant validity was also done in, in this stage. Finally, the confirmatory factor analysis was performed. We had 34 items, but however, in case of confirmatory factor analysis, eight items, they were deleted. Finally, we were left with 26 items where mindset comprised of 13 items, measurement comprised of six items and methodology had seven items under it. Then we look for the fitness of the measurement model. We would be looking for those uh, fitness again. Then the fit of the three distinct but correlated dimensions of throughput orientation, convergent validity, discriminant validity was also looked into. And the uh, reliability was assessed using composite reliability and average variance explained. Then also, you know, we, uh, we had also looked into the common method variance, this common method bias also using Herman single factor test, marker variable, single order CFA model and correlation matrix was also observed. Among all these, the marker variable is the best and it is, uh, I mean, it is the well acknowledged and well accepted method also to, uh, to to check the common method bias. So for this, what is required is actually, sir, we need to put two, three items which are not related to our subject. So which is something like, which is uncorrelated. So commonly, like in my case, I use uh, two items, like, you know, I go for regular exercises, but I'm very health conscious, something of this sort, which is not related to your own study. So normally we, we need to put, everybody, everybody should put, so that, you know, you come to know about the seriousness to what extent the respondent was serious by filling up the question. So this is actually required. But we used all the four methods which are available and uh, to check the common method bias. And it was not an issue in our case. So now we would look into the part of uh, confirmatory factor Maybe analysis uh, only. Then we we ran these models. Yes, sir. Okay. I have two, three questions here, if you can hear. Ma'am, my first question is, uh, in the CFA, you used AMOS prob probably. Yes. Yes, sir. AMOS. Because uh, we require, uh, quite uh, often we require the model fit indicator while developing the scale. And that is not available in the smart PLS or other softwares. So that's why AMOS is a good choice. Yes, sir. Uh, 
so so i i suggest that you know when you are running uh, multiple measurement models mm -hmm. so i think the best is the multiple measurement models and multiple you know structural models also so i think the better uh, and, and more particularly because we have also looked into the shy and goldstein their recommendation also that you know when you have in, initially you should have the reflective uh, so i think emos is the best software to use because you know you can have multiple reflective models in that case Right. So I have used covariance based uh, SEM only in this case, okay. and uh, using MOS. Okay, ma'am. My second question is: uh, these days we emphasize you should not apply EFA CFA on the same data set. So yes, sir. did you yes, sir. take separate? Yeah, uh, true. Yes, sir. So uh, very well. I mean, very rightly said by you. So uh, I would also suggest here that the scholars they should not use EFA and CFA on the same data set. So better it is that they should divide the data set into two halves. So EFA should be run on the first half and the CFA can be run on the second half. But in our case, because that time, you know, there was no such objection from the reviewer side. So we applied EFA and CFA on the same data set. So this was, yes, I mean, uh, I, I should admit it. That very hard, very stringent, separate should be there. It should not be same sample. Yes, sir. it should not be same because sir, otherwise the basic purpose gets repeated. I, I think right. so because when you are running on the same data set, if those things are confirmed using EFA, how can you think that you know would not be confirmed using CFA? Absolutely. So you need to confirm. You need to confirm that whatever are the results of EFA, you need to confirm on the different data set. Then only otherwise, you know, confirmation would obviously be there if right. you are using the same data set. Right. right. Yes, sir. Right. So finally, ma'am, we reached to this particular table, table three. Here you discussed about the several of the models. So yes, sir. Uh, if you allow, ma'am, I can share my screen with your help. I tried to make. Uh, those yes, sir. Models. Very quickly, uh, sir. Uh, very ah. quickly, I'll refresh that what these models are, and okay. then we would be running those models. So first model is regarding the second order market orientation model. Actually, market orientation was kept here as a moderator, and that's why nomological validation was also checked in this paper. We want to see. if some you know relationship conceptually theoretically there is orientation and the market orientation so then we looked into it that if we uh, individually we look into the impact of throughput orientation on the business performance whether that link or that relationship gets strengthened when we include market orientation between uh, these throughput orientation and business that's why we looked into the second order market orientation why second order because market orientation has three dimensions one is the intelligence uh, generation second is the intelligence dissemination third is the responsiveness that's why we checked the second order market orientation model and the model fitness comes out to be very well second model is first order mindset model because it has those 13 items under it third model it is also fine so then we looked into the first order measurement model so this measurement model this is a second dimension of uh, throughput orientation it is also within the threshold limits then model four comprises the first order methodology model it is also within the time uh, within the 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 values the cutoff values which are prescribed in the, the literature model five talks about the second order business performance this is our dependent variable which had two dimensions under it the subjective measures and the objective measures and that's why we looked into the uh, the model fitness of second order business performance model also this is also perfectly fine then talking about particularly about the throughput orientation we looked into the three ams the mindset measurement methodology when we correlate all these three dimensions then the model fitness is good Seven model is contrary to the model six because now we are uh, talking about uncorrelated model. Three M's which are uncorrelated to each other. So that model is poor as compared to as compared to model six. Then we looked into the first order throughput orientation model where all the items, 26 items, they were free in case of first order throughput orientation model. Then we looked into the model nine, which is 3M correlated structural model. These two, nine and 10, they are the structural model. So in the correlated structural model, we, uh, we have you know, drawn the covariances among these three M's and then later to the throughput orientation, throughput orientation further leading to the business performance. Model 10 talks about the orthogonal structure model, uncorrelated three M's leading to, I mean, th that is a that is a basically a reflective throughput orientation model. This is, when you say three M orthogonal structural model, so that is a, that is a second order throughput orientation model leading to the throughput orientation construct leading to the business performance. So these were the, 10 models, sir, which were discussed. Okay. Sir, so uh, can you share 20. these models? 
I have a query. Yes, uh, when you use the business performance or the market orientation, did you use any standardized scale for that? Uh, yes, sir. So for business performance also, we uh, we got the standardized scale for the market orientation. It is a standardized scale given by Koli and Joaske. Okay. So, ma'am, uh, let me... All the well-established items, sir. Correct, ma'am. So, let me share my screen now. And uh, if I give you just a summary, ma'am, what I understood, that there are the basically three constructs. One construct is you defined in the model number one. That is a standardized one, market orientation, comprises of... I, I, I hope my Market orientation. Yes, sir. Okay. Intelligence gathering. Yes, sir. Intelligence yes, sir. Dissemination yes, sir. Dissemination. It's fine. That's a standardized one. And another one is... Mod model one. That yes, is business sir. performance. These are standard skills you have taken. Business performance. Yeah, ma'am. Then you started with your work. Objective measures and objective measures. Right, ma'am. Yes, you sir. started with one is the mindful model two, then model three, it's a measurement. And that is again the reason, ma'am. Yes, why sir. We First should order use... measurement model. Right, ma'am. That is again the reason why we should use AMOS because running a single construct is not possible in smart PLS. Yes. Yes. Right, and then model number four is the methodology. Then you come with the model number six. You connected all the three, and it is free. Correlated. So model yes, sir. Correlated. Seven, so you simply uncorrelated, uncorrelated. orthogonal. So ma'am, we double click on this. We go to the parameter and just put covariance zero. Put zero. Now this becomes the uncorrelated or the orthogonal. Uncorrelated. Yes. So two, three, yes, four, six, and seven are related to your scale. And then, ma'am, you come out yes, with a uh, measurement model, which consists of now a throughput. I think I missed uh, second yes, order sir. also. All the yes, sir. And three order. main constructs were there. Yeah, it's a second order. So, ma'am, it's a technically reflective, reflective second order. Yes, sir. Reflective only. Reflective only. And then there is a market orientation. Then there is a business performance. Business performance. Of so we run the measurement model. After this, we impute. We get yes, the sir. score. And after getting the score, we go to the this particular thing. Throughput yes, orientation. sir. So market. actually, because we we are we have proposed that market orientation moderates the link between throughput orientation and business performance. So we check the model fitness by, yes, sir, by taking an interaction of market orientation with throughput orientation and the joint impact on business performance. Yes, sir. Correct. Correct. So this, and then there is a, this particular, yes, model number 10 is the case. Model, so, uh, model eight, so model eight. Model eight, we have discussed, it's on the business performance. Effect of uh, throughput orientation on business performance, model eight. Uh, okay, there was one more. Uh, yes, sir, this one, one this one. There, where yes, sir. effect in the, this yes, model sir. number model. six. Here you said all, remove the mindfulness, yes, etc. And all are connected to the one particular circle. This was also, uh, which yes, I forget to draw, but uh, this is something all should be connected to one. Technically, we are saying that the three yes, are sir. not a distinct construct. But, they are not distinct. But in that case, it was value was very poor. So it means, yes, sir, people perceive it as the distinct construct, yet very much related. Yes, sir. They are related. Yes, sir. Okay, ma'am. Ma'am, uh, I can really understand the amount of uh, hard work you have gone through in this particular paper, and it certainly deserves to be in the A star category. But, uh, ma'am, most of the scholars they believe scale construction is something like we will do it on a weekend. Now we can understand it's a very serious job. It's a very serious job. Uh, sir, sir, yes, sir. Because I started in 2015. So 2015, I did all this competition modeling. Everything was done. It was submitted to this uh, decision sciences, and we received a reject and resubmit R and R from uh, decision sciences. Then 2016, again we devoted so many months together, and then again there was a major revision for it. And then finally 2017, um, unfortunately, my father passed on 29th of March, and uh, one day, uh, one day after that only, I received a mail that you know it has been accepted. On 30th March, I received this mail. So I imagine, KJ, I mean it's a hard work of more than two years, sir, more than two years. Um, not that you see. So for me, you know, to think about uh, another scale validation is something, you know, my God, uh, I have to think many times before mm -hmm. thinking about writing a paper on scale validation. Not that easy. Not that easy. And that's why I always say, ma'am, making a scale can be itself a PhD topic, ma'am. Yes, sir. It's a full yes, sir. I agree. Topic, 
to your job it's a i i i agree yes sir i mean scholars they should think those are actually serious about doing the research work i think they should seriously think about scale development measurement and validation as their thesis topic i agree yes. with you sir but the good thing uh, is it's a thesis in itself it's a thesis yes, in sir. itself and the good thing is your yes, contribution sir. is very much visible you give us something new which people in the you said 10 or 20 years down the line people will refer to this paper once it is published yes sir yeah i mean that is that is our motive let's see <laughs> okay ma'am uh, yes. we can close this session but uh, i would like to whenever you will give time we will like to go through once very small here and there the doubts are there in the entire process particularly sure, about sure, the sir. interview etc so we can have it some other time so yes sir yes sir sure sir thank you right, ma'am thanks for your time thank